Hello friends and welcome. I'm VA Adam. In today's video, I'll be showing you the work that's been carried out on my 1972 Buick Riviera during the first service and the parts that have been changed. So this service is carried out by some great guys at Namco in Farnborough, just down the road from me. There's a link to them in the description below. They've done a great job on the Riv and she's running really nicely and her stance is much better. They kept all of the old parts that they removed and now I'm going to show them to you with an explanation of what's been replaced. As an overview, we have the rear shocks, front springs, front shocks, coil pack, ignition system, sparks and bypass hose. I would have loved to have done this work myself, but unfortunately, it's just too many limiting factors for me to be able to do that. The main problems are I've got no garage, no real space to work on the car, and I've also got a couple of businesses to run. On top of that, I live in the UK, so it rains all the time, and that makes it really difficult to try and undertake jobs because you're halfway through them and then it starts uh, bucketing it down with rain. But the guys at Namco took really good care of her and did a really good job. They told me that front springs and the shocks were horrible to get out even for them. They had to drill the split pins um, to get the springs out and they were really, really corroded and really held in place. So to be honest, I'm actually really glad that I didn't attempt the work myself because I never would have finished in a day and uh, would have left me in a right pickle. So now let's start taking a look at these old parts, guys. Any new parts that I mentioned, by the way, are linked in the description below. So starting over here with the rear shocks, they actually look pretty new, and that's because they are. These shocks were only fitted in 2013, and they've only probably done a few hundred miles, but I've had to replace them because they're actually the wrong ones. These ones are apparently for a mid-90s Lincoln, um, according to the original parts supplier, so I've no idea why they were fitted to this uh, 72 Riviera. But you can actually see that there's a big difference here between the rear shocks and the front ones which are much smaller. The correct replacement ones are the Gabriel 69675s for the front and 69724s for the rear. They're both very similar to these front ones so it gives you a real idea of the um, how incorrect these rear shocks actually are and what they were doing was pitching the rib really high at the rear. These are the old front springs and uh, they've obviously been taken out. We're not sure, but we suspect that these are probably the original springs. And the issue here was that simply over time and the age, the coils have become really compressed. So what with the rear shocks being absolutely massive and the rear springs being huge, and then the front springs being really compressed down, um, the pitch on the rib was just, was just quite exaggerated towards the front. You can see a large amount of deposit buildup here. Um, after some investigation around the engine, it appears that there's a small gasket leak on the passenger side just underneath the valve cover. So that's going to be another thing that's going to have to be sorted out. And you can just see all of the residue build up here over the years. And here are the front shock absorbers. Again, these could be original, but either way, they're really knackered and these are definitely needed replacement. Next up over here, we have the ignition system. Now, at the recommendation of Namco, I actually changed this from an old points ignition system to electronic ignition. I find that the Riviera starts much easier with electronic ignition and doesn't require as many cranks, especially if she's been standing for a few days or a week or something like that. Namco chose a specific conversion kit from a company called Petronix, and it's a really sympathetic kit that didn't change the look under the hood. Here's the old points ignition system and the old ignition coil. I believe the ignition coil is original, so I'm gonna keep that part as it's not broken at all. If you're unfamiliar with the differences between points and electronic ignition like I was, then there's a couple of really useful links in the description below or videos that explain both of those systems. Here are the old spark plugs. They were AC Delco R45TS. I actually replaced them with Champion spark plugs, which are RV17YC, and they were recommended to me. You can see that the old ones were actually not too bad, and they probably worked fine. But we didn't know the history um, and they had, I suspect, been changed in 2013. So I'm glad that we replaced them because they've probably been in there a little while. And this is the thermostatic bypass hose, or it should be. In this case, it was a piece of old hose that somebody had lying around and they just shoved it in there. 
So you can see it's got this really nasty kink in the hose, and that's because it's just a regular straight piece of hose that somebody's just trying to shove in place. But the engine actually requires a hose with a 90 degree bend built into it. Now that's because the hose has to come out of the engine um, towards the front of the car and then make a 90 degree bend downwards. So this piece of hose was bad for many reasons. The kink would reduce the flow of the coolant, but also it would make the hose more likely to fracture over time because it had this nasty kink in it. So that was replaced with a Deco 70620 hose with a specific 90 degree bend in. In addition to all the parts that I've just shown you, all of the belts were also replaced. So here you have the belt for the alternator, power assisted steering and the air conditioning. As for the other parts, due to the lack of history, I didn't actually know when these belts were last changed. Uh, the only belt that was giving immediate issue was the power assisted steering belt, which was slipping a lot. And I believe that's this one. The belt was slipping so much that when the rear was stationary, the power assisted steering didn't really work at all. And the belts would uh, squeal under uh, acceleration, again, due to slippage. Therefore, Namco changed all of them um, so that we knew that all of them were done exactly when they were done. And I am afraid that I do not know what replacement belts Namco used. They actually sorted those out for me. They were the only parts which they wanted to specifically sort out themselves. You can actually see how much these belts are worn. Um, some of them, the teeth have almost gone completely. So I'm really glad that we got these replaced and the power assisted steering now works beautifully. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, this is VA Adam signing off.